Welcome to the Q Podcast. Q is about conversation. If we're really concerned about ending poverty, we've got to be more concerned about creating justice. Our cultural products as Christians need to both defy and resonate with the culture. God's doing amazing things. His church is expanding. His church is growing. It's not what's the purpose of my life. It's what is the purpose that's been assigned. Stay curious. Think well. Advance good. This is Q. Welcome to another edition of the Q Podcast. Hope you're having a great summer and excited about the talk that we're going to get to hear today. It was a conversation I was able to have at Q this past spring with Henry and Alex Seeley. Now, you maybe haven't heard of Henry and Alex. They were born and raised in Australia. They spent many years on a pastoral team at a church in Melbourne, Australia, where they pioneered a worship movement that grew and the church grew and and became a large church. But then they felt called to relocate to the U.S. and specifically to Nashville, And so, as the story goes, they began these Tuesday night Bible studies in their basement where a few people would come around, they would listen to music together, they would play music and worship together, do Bible study, and over time, it just started to grow and there was this sense that they were encountering God in just new and fresh ways. And so, so many people were drawn into that, it slowly began a church, and they started a church now called Belonging Co. And at Belonging, Henry and Alex lead together. And part of what I wanted to talk with them about at Q this year was the dynamics of leading together, male and female, where Henry tends to lead more as a worship pastor and leader, and Alex tends to lead more on the teaching front, although they both can can do either. Alex is a powerful Bible teacher, and as they're leading this organization and our discussions at Q, we're talking a lot about men and women working together. We were talking about the Me Too movement. We were talking about gender equality in the church and what that looks like. And Henry and Alex just gave us this really practical picture of how they think about that and how they've come to lead together as husband and wife inside the context of a local church. And so I want you to just join with me as we sit down on the couch and I interview them for nine minutes about that conversation. And then I'll be back in just a moment to follow that up. So you guys moved here from Australia where you were just used to leading together and that was that was kind of the norm, but then you show up in the South and all of a sudden you guys are doing things together and, and what was that like? I mean, were there some hurdles theologically, philosophically that you found as you started leading together? Yeah, I think because we had no intention of actually starting a church, we had a Bible study at home. We just took the role that we did in Australia. I was a teacher and preacher and and pastor in in the church and Henry was worship leader. So we kind of just took the same posture that we would have done in Australia. But when the church became an official church and we had people coming from different denominations, there was the theological differences of uh, how do I answer the question to my mum and dad that there's a female pastor and preacher. And so we were able to lead people scripturally that it's actually okay. And we're not heresy, you know, <laughs> committing yeah. heresy. And Henry, you have, you're have you a great teacher. I've heard you teach as well, but you're also a musician and, and, and lead worship. And um, it's just been fun to watch the two of you share in this together and to lead so well. I know as, as my wife, Rebecca, stepped into her gifts more because it wasn't always that way. It was pretty energizing and exciting to see how together as a team we could accomplish a lot more and be on mission together. What's that been like for you? I know you guys grew up in the same youth yeah. group, right? And yeah, we did. <laughs> and we, uh, you know, we've been married for 20 years this week, actually. And uh, Congratulations. You know, thank you. And I think, you know, just realizing that um, gift is way less about, it's, it's not a, a, a gender thing. You know, Al- Alex is not a great female speaker. She's a great speaker. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a great male worship leader. I'm a, I'm a worship leader. It's, I'm passionate about worship. Um, so I think to, you know, to be able to walk hand in hand with your spouse and, and see them flourish and thrive in the roles and the gifts that God has, you know, opened the doors and blessed them, you know, to walk in. I think it's, it's amazing to be, yeah. you know, to, to be able to be part of that. So. Yeah. And in leading together, have you found there to be some challenges in that? I know with Rebecca and I, we, we, we get into it sometimes. You both are strong personalities and you lead, but how do you work through conflict? Yeah. Fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> 
You know, I think we can sometimes dismiss that, but that's the, that's the reality of, as a believer, that's got to enter every part of your, yeah. your life in all, in all seriousness. Um, but I think really for us, the, the, the biggest challenges we maybe had in the early days were more just um, us breaking away from old mindsets or mentalities or maybe even areas of hurt from a previous season that were, were potentially stopping us stepping into things for this season. Yeah. But I, I feel like we've got a really good flow of just honoring each other and understanding in, in the same way that we would with the rest of our team, just yeah. realizing people's strengths and weaknesses. And, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's incredible accountability in leading something together with someone that you're married to because, you know, for me, there's no hiding. You yeah. know, for Alex, there's no hiding. It's like we're in this 24-7. And so, right. you know, that, that's beautiful and, and powerful in itself, I think. I think the tensions have been just like Henry will want to do something and I'm not ready to catch up to it. Mm. So we will have the discussion. Um, but, you know, we always resolve. And I think because we've always been great friends, we've always worked together. Before we were even married, we worked in ministry together. I think there's just been this really good camaraderie of being able to go, all right, well, why do you see it that way? Right. And it always resolves itself. And the best solution is always prayer. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, and we heard some talks over the last couple of days about gender equality, about women leading in the church and some, you know, the challenge that that has been in the church specifically, maybe more so than other places for, for us to see women be able to really step into their gifts. Um, Henry, what do you see as the, the reason that is, as you've experienced now 20 years of ministry, and I know you have conversations with other church leaders who just might not like your bottle or agree with it but like what do you think's going on in the american church i think that's it's an interesting uh, especially moving to the south was quite confronting to us because there is uh, a lot of this is religious culture you know of and and really a lot of it boils down to one or two particular scriptures that people have taken and formed a, you know an entire theology uh theological stance on that from one and i'm not, definitely not discounting those scriptures but in the context of the Bible, you can't read the Word of God and then erase or eradicate every female leader that's had, you know, significant part to play in the kingdom of God all the way from the Old Testament through the New Testament. Um, so I think to take one or two scriptures out of perhaps the, the local context that Paul's talking about, addressing issues within the church, um, you can't take that and, and build a doctrine that surpasses everything else that the Bible, I think, I believe quite clearly displays the fact that you know man and woman were created in the image of God. Then we read you know in, in Galatians three it talks about there's now no you know there's no racial difference, there's no gender difference. We're all part of this royal priesthood. So then, how as as priests as the royal priesthood are we then managing to take all of that authority mm. and take women out of a part of that? I, I don't believe that's the heart of or the intention of God in that. Yeah. So. And so. So you would, just continuing down the theological path, you would see it as every individual can have the gifts of the Spirit and the actual gifts that, that are laid out for Christians to carry out in the church. And where you see those gifts, you just lift them up. Absolutely. I, I think gifting is not gender uh, specific at all. Yeah. Um, talk about just your, your ministry here in Nashville. I mean, it's just been phenomenal. I've seen so, so many, there's, there's such a power of, of truth-telling in your, in your teaching, and also just anointed charismatic worship where people are free to worship. And it's, it's hard to find churches these days where we're seeing both of those. It feels like they're either really great worship experiences, but the teaching maybe is a little light. And with you guys, it's not the case. It's, it's both and. Um, talk about your commitment to, to both and. I'm just going to say something really simple. I think Henry and I have always been hungry for the presence of God. I believe it's the presence of God in that that changes people. Yeah. Anyone that had an encounter with Jesus in the New Testament was changed. I don't believe in program or information changing people. So we try and kind of get out of the way and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to lives and don't underestimate, millennials are hungry for the real Jesus yeah. and they're hungry for the real Holy Spirit. Yeah. And when you make room for that, people are going to be drawn to it like a moth to a flame. So we've always been intentional about presence. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one, one thing that we say often in our church is we're, we're much more about pursuing revelation than just information. Yeah. Um, because there's, I mean, information, we, 
we live in a day and age where we have access to more information at, at more levels than we ever have in the entirety of humanity. Yeah. Um, yet people are still lost, still hurting, still broken. So there's got to be something beyond just information. So, you know, we're really, we're, we're not just trying to teach people about Jesus. We're trying to bring people to Jesus. Right. And so, you know, from a worship point of view, you know, we, we sing worship songs like every other church does. But beyond that, that's, it's not a means to an end. We're actually cultivating an atmosphere and a presence where people are, mm-hmm. their, their hearts are focused, their minds are focused, their, their understanding and perceiving that, that the presence of God is there in that place. And through that, you know, we believe yeah. that we're seeing people's lives change. So. And I know the, the music that your team and you guys have been writing is now being sung around the world. It's just been fun to show up in different places and see that these anthems are now part of the church globally. And Alex, I know you have a book that you just finished that's very exciting about tailor-made and, and just how people can really understand who they were meant to be. Just give us a little moment on, on kind of the thesis there and what you're hoping to unlock for people. Yeah, I think being a pastor uh, for 24 years, the thing that I've found quite alarming in the church is the lack of identity in Christ in the church yeah. when God made us to be original to leave a mark that nobody else can leave, to speak words that nobody else is, you know, everything that you're speaking here at this conference, we're the kingdom-minded carriers to to bring change. But if you don't know who you are, you can't then reflect the glory of God. And so my journey of developing, because I was a very insecure person, and so it's just that journey of finding out who God says I am, swiping all the labels who parents, teachers, leaders, whoever, peers say that I am, and living from that fullness. And so I'm really hoping that this book will just just reawaken the identity in Christ and discover how God designed us to be. And such an important theological concept in the midst of a culture where it's all about our own taste and who we want to be to really start to root this back into where it was meant to be. Well, thank you both for being with us, for being here at the whole event, and just sharing with us your wisdom and your experience. Thank you, guys. guys. They're a fun couple to talk to, as you can tell, and both have strong opinions. I mean, you can hear just their passion for this idea that, look, You know, as Henry's saying, you know, that his wife, Alex, she's not just a great female speaker, she's a great speaker. And he's not just a great male worship leader, he's a worship leader that's passionate about worship. And and I think that is the idea here, is that we each have callings, we each have gifts, and we need to use those gifts. I know in the follow-up to Q, some of the conversations I had with pastors and churches where they don't have female pastor teachers, you know, just wondered, well, are we trying to say something more here theologically about the need for women to be in teaching positions in the church, leadership positions? And I would say the answer to that is there wasn't a specific agenda here besides saying, we believe women have amazing gifts and they should be leading. But we also respect that there's certain doctrinal decisions and denominations and positions on women teaching, women as pastors, women as elders that differ throughout the church. And so, Uh, In this conversation, it wasn't really a goal to get into the theology behind what they're operating in at the Belonging Co. as much as it was to say, what is it like to lead together, husband and wife, as couples? So many couples that come to Q are in that position where they're leading together in the same organizations, the same companies, um, but also in ministry. What does it mean to support one another? What does it mean to come alongside and around one another in partnership where your spouse is using the gifts that they've been given? And so I hope this for you just stirs that conversation amongst you if you're married, amongst you and your spouse, or maybe amongst you and your friends about how do you encourage and support one another? How do you kind of remove in some ways just looking at a person uh, based on their specific sex or gender, but you actually look at them as a human being made in the image of God that God's given amazing gifts to? And how is it that we in the church, how is it that we in our culture can be supportive of lifting up those people, lifting up their gifts allowing them to flourish, and allowing more people to benefit because of their gifts. And so I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I just want to remind you this summer as you're taking some time away, maybe you're getting on vacation, maybe you're having the opportunity to read a long book, or maybe it's just that you're having a chance to deep dive on a few topics or issues that through Q, we have hundreds and hundreds of talks, 
podcast series that are all there for you to benefit from, for you to listen to alone, maybe as you're out for a run or working out, or maybe it's just in your car, or maybe it's that you want to bring your family together and listen to a talk, a conversation. I know a wonderful talk I want to recommend to you on technology by Andy Crouch, describing the idea of managing technology. It's one of the favorites for families who are taking a vacation coming together with one another and saying, hey, let's rethink our media use. Let's rethink how we as a family are operating or being operated by our systems of of digital technology. And if you go to our website at qideas.org, you can search Andy Crouch and you can see this talk he gave on managing technology. It'd be a wonderful way to start off a week, start off a weekend, just take a little break from the norms of the busyness of life and rethink how are we operating as families? How are we operating as individuals? What's driving the way that we operate daily? Are we taking time to show up in one another's lives to to really have true relationship? And so um, I hope you'll find that and many other resources that will encourage you in your walk as you try to live out a faithful Christian life in the midst of a culture that's constantly changing. But what a great opportunity that we get to live through that and we get to be a part of it. And so I hope you'll have a wonderful week and a good summer. We'll look forward to our next conversation together on the Q Podcast.